Right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to get Windows 7 running inside VirtualBox within Ubuntu. So, Ubuntu can do a heck of a lot, most things you would ever need to do on a day to day basis, but there are the odd few things you sometimes just can't get going in Linux. And if you can't find a Linux alternative, or you can't get the program running in Wine, your alternatives really are to dual boot with Windows, or you could run Windows within a virtual machine. And running within a virtual machine is a lot quicker because you're not having to reboot the computer and then having to reboot back into Windows. On the downside though, you can't really run games in the virtual box. You can do most other things though. So there are requirements for running virtual box. So you need a dual core or dual threaded CPU and probably about one gig of RAM at minimum. Now I've managed to get VirtualBox running on my netbook, so that's a 1.6 gigahertz dual threaded and about 1 gig of RAM, and it does do it. I've run Windows 7 in that. <laughs> it's slow, but it'll do it. So the install instructions for VirtualBox are in the description below. Uh, it's about six terminal lines. Uh, if it's a bit complicated, I've also provided a link to a script um, on Debian Pastebin, so it might be a bit easier to read that. But yeah, it's not too difficult, it's just six lines, and just copy and paste, and there you are, the install's done. So after you've installed VirtualBox and done a reboot, you can now run it. So, to get it going, you need to press New, create a new virtual machine. Next, now give it a name, I'll call it Windows 7, put X64 to say it's 64-bit. Notice when I do that, it will automatically change the version. And just to remind myself what it is, it's pro, so professional. Now set the memory. Now you don't want to starve your operating system of memory, but you also need to give enough for the virtual machine to run. So it's recommending a minimum size of 500 meg RAM for Windows 7, but because I've got a fair bit to spare, 16 gig, uh, I'm just going to allocate a bit more, so 4096 is 4 gig. You can also use a slider to adjust it. So next, Yep, we'll create a new hard disk, next. Yep, VirtualBox disk image, and next. Now storage details, dynamically allocated or fixed size. So dynamically allocated, well as it says, it'll only use up to the space of the system in use. It doesn't use the whole lot. On the downside, it's probably slightly slower than fixed size. Realistically, I haven't seen a difference in speed. So the best bet is to go for dynamically allocated. That way, if you don't use much space, the VirtualBox guest is quite small. So next, now you allocate it wherever you want really. I recommend, they recommend 25 gig. Honestly, I'm gonna give it about 50. Now it's worth setting a reasonable amount early on. It doesn't matter if you're actually gonna use it or not, but once you've set it, it's very difficult to adjust the size. So we've done that, and so next. And that's it. Create. Yep. Now I'm just going to go for settings. There's a few other things we need to change. So nothing under general. So system, processor. Now because I've got multiple cores on my CPU, I can allocate it more resources. Now again, you don't want to starve your operating system of resources to run the guest. You need to balance it out. So I'm giving it four CPU cores out of six. Don't need to do anything there under acceleration. So display, give it a load of video memory. Oh, actually we'll give it 3D acceleration and we can give it 2D acceleration for Windows. You can't give 2D acceleration to Linux guests. It's not been implemented. Well, I'm not doing anything with remote display. Next, storage. Need to provide it with the ISO file for Windows, or the CD, if you've got a CD. So choose the guest for it. So choose the file. So for mine, I've downloaded them all from torrent sites. Nothing illegal with that. It's uh, licensing it that, become, that can become a legal issue. Right, audio, don't need to change anything. Network. You can leave it as is, but I prefer to have the bridge adapter. And don't need to change anything else. So OK. Then start. 
I'll just guide you through some of the install. So to start with, you have to choose language. English United Kingdom. For next. Oh yeah, yeah, I can put it down. Right, where do you want to install Windows? Yeah, just unallocated space. Next. When the install is finally nearing completion, so now we can start typing a username. Uh, I'm just going to give it anything stuff, so call it Dude. Yep. Dude PC is fine for a computer name. Uh, password. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hate the updates. Ask me later. Don't trouble me now. Because that's not what I'd recommend using. I would absolutely recommend you set the set it to do the updates. I just don't like the updates. You never know when the system has to reboot so many times for updates. God, it's just something you don't get used to. Right. I'm surprised it didn't ask for registration then. Okay, whatever. Anyway, if it did, you just uh, say ignore and we'll register it later. <laughs> right, anyway, that does that part. Uh, now we just need to reboot and get the guest editions installed. Now this could be a right pain because what you need to do is press F8 on system boot up. And I've missed it. <laughs> so, a great alternative if you have trouble making it appear is just power it off mid boot up. Make it crash a few times, it'll eventually come up and say, Oh, do you want to boot into safe mode? Yeah! <laughs> so, let's make VirtualBox reappear and we'll try and catch it this time. Yeah, we've got it. So, safe mode. Now, the reason for booting it in safe mode is because the guest editions don't install under the full system. You have to be in safe mode. I'm not sure why, but that's how it is. Right, so what I need to do is go up to Devices and select the Install Guest Editions. That pops the CD in the drive of the guest machine, which we can now go and run. Don't know why it didn't auto run. Oh, here we go. I just opened up Explorer to find the CD. So we go next. Yep, next. They could have the Direct 3D support. It says it's experimental. Your choice if you want to use it. I'm going to go for it. Right, always trust software from Oracle Corporation. Yes, stop asking me questions, you stupid machine. And then reboot now. Could quickly pop the CD out of the drive. So just go remove CD from the drive. Let's see what happens now when we reboot. Well, for starters, you've got to take wait ages for Windows to boot up. <laughs> nah, actually, I'll give it its due. Once you've customised it, it can boot up pretty quick, almost on par with Linux. Booting off a solid state disk, I did get it down to about five seconds. Anyway, that's it now. You can uh, go and resize the display. So that shows the guest editions is working. Right. Something else I should have showed you, so let me just shut that down. Go back into the settings on here, you can set up a network drive or shared folders. So just go and click the add button. Uh, well, what have I got here? I used to have one that I used. So anyway, just go for other. Uh, I can't remember now. Uh, anyway, let's just say I'm going to share my downloads folder with Windows. I can go for read only and auto mount. So I'm going to say auto mount, and actually, because I don't ever trust the security in Microsoft, I always give it read only. So it can't go and infest my downloads folder with viruses. In your choice, though, if you want to make it read only or not, just say what I like. Right now, when we open up Explorer, go to network, we have it's that, isn't it? Vbox server, yeah, downloads. There's my downloads folder. So that's sort of it, really. We just have to run loads of updates. So we can get that. Windows update, let it run. One final thing we'll have to do is register Windows. Now, because I refuse to pay for Windows, because I don't use it as a main operating system, you can use a registration program called Windows Loader. So, I'm not going to give you the link, but let's just say if you go on Google, type in Windows Loader and My Digital Life, you'll find it. And it's a very simple program to use, you just select the hardware that's closest to your system. 
So that's it. That is how you install Windows 7 inside VirtualBox to run within Ubuntu. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later.